Clonanda, good afternoon, and, and thanks for, for having me in the session. Um, and it's a you know really a really good session. Nice to see the, the others that are on on the panel with me. And I've been tasked with or agreed to to put a spotlight on on education. Others are looking at, at, at health uh, and beyond. And really, I'm going to do two things. So one, I'm uh, it's going to be very data heavy because that's this session is data heavy. Um, but you've also brought along a, a load of folk that like numbers. Um, uh, and I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to talk about uh, the relationship between education and homelessness amongst um, children in, in homeless families. And we'll look at a little bit at, at outcomes there. That's basically about talking about the, the relationship between the, the two. And then the second part of the presentation, we'll, we'll look at, well, well, what could we do about this? As in working with schools as a, as a conduit and a route through towards the, the prevention of homelessness. So that's the two parts. And in that intervention, I'll talk about Upstream Cymru, which some of you will have, have seen me talk about um, before. Right, so this um, first very confusing table, uh, apologies. I've put green circles, apologies for those that are colorblind like me, but there are three circles on there that tell you the figures you want to be looking at. What this, this confusing table tells us is it's comparing the um, outcomes, education and attainment, at the core subject indicators um, at different key stages. And I'm focusing on key stage three as one example. And what the, the circle on the very far right tells us is, look, 64% of children in homeless families over the period at which we were, we were able to observe them um, were achieving that, that core subject indicator. If we compare that to um, the figure for all pupils, it's much lower. All pupils achieved 81%. Um, then when we compare to, to students on free school meals, actually we're, we're roughly comparable. So in terms of attainment, what this told us is, look, after an episode of homelessness, children in homeless families, um, their attainment appears to be worse than, um, the, than the average pupil's attainment. We've not yet got into the data to be able to kind of control for, for income and other things. Plus, believe it or not, in the homelessness data, we don't record the children. So it was a, a big statistical job to even try and find the children in these households. But but we've done it and that, that's work in progress. The second one is perhaps a little bit more telling as a, as a slide. So this one looks at absenteeism uh, and, and its relationship with homelessness. And if we just took uh, the third bar graph just to focus on the 2014-15, what that tells us is, look, as a child in a, a homeless household, I am five times more likely to be absent from school for more than five weeks than children in, in families that didn't become homeless. This is just based on one local authority's data. It's a, a program of linkage that we've been doing, but it's really telling about the impacts of homelessness on those, uh, those children's lives. So, again, you know, Mary said we know these things. Perhaps we do. This is the first time we've been able to prove it in Wales, um, but look, it's telling the picture that we, we thought we knew. So now we go on and say, well, what can we do? Let's look at some earlier upstream action. And so I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about upstream Cymru, which is, for me, one of the most exciting um, new approaches that we're piloting in Wales. Uh, I'm very lucky to be learning from some, some super colleagues out in Geelong in Australia. We're adapting this intervention in Wales, and we're doing that um, with a collaboration of schools, youth services, uh, SLAMIA, the intervention agency, and, and uh, me and a couple of colleagues at Cardiff. And what the model does, what it does is you have a, a survey undertaken with all the children in, in a secondary school or as many of the children as you, you can reach. Um, and that online survey asks questions about four areas of a, a young person's life. So from their voice, questions about homelessness, education, engagement, resilience and well-being. And from that survey, you're identify, able to identify levels of risk um, and the survey isn't the be all and end all. The survey just tells you, actually, we may want to talk to these young people. And that's what happens. Slam I with the school, sit down with young people, talk about their answers to the survey and then make decisions about um, which young people they, they can work with and, and what sort of kind of um, young person centred support. And then normally it looks like mediation, family mediation, etc. So that's the model. It's been we've been piloting it for a year. And what I thought I'd do do is just talk through some of the, the findings of the survey because it tells us some really interesting things. So school disengagement 
Look, schools have got pretty good data on this, so I don't think we're providing much new to schools here, but just as headlines, 5% um, of pupils regularly skip school, 9% got into a lot of trouble at school, and 13% uh, didn't get along with most of their teachers. These are relatively low level indicators, but we are six statements and we uh, combine those to create a scale. And basically about 12 percent of young people are, are at a medium risk of disengagement and, and a very small proportion are at high risk. As I say, schools generally have a good sense of of school disengagement. Um, you'll see why I kept that slide in a second. Then. We distinguish between family homelessness and youth homelessness. It's a little bit of an arbitrary distinction, but it, it is important. So family homelessness is, is where the young person isn't leaving that household, but is at, at risk as part of a, a, a family. And we ask four questions of the young people about things going on at home. And 4% of, of young people, of, of students, indicate that the family um, couldn't pay the rent or mortgage that year. 5% reported moving three or more times in the past year. That's an indicator of housing instability. And again, when we combine those, it tells us that, look, about one in 10 pupils is at high risk of family homelessness. The action that we're not yet in a position to take is that that would be a referral to housing options who can act with that family that have found out about a family at risk way before they've perhaps got near to, to housing options and, and gives an opportunity for, for much lower level intervention and take away that experience of, of homelessness. And then there, there's, again, a small proportion, 2%, who are an immediate priority um, for assistance. Getting on again into, into more detail, and this is the, the kind of the keystone of the, the survey, which is risk of youth homelessness. And pupils get asked eight questions. And these are, again, indicators that something might be um, there might be risk at home for those young people. Um, again, we develop a scale. We have 5% of young people fall into to a group that we call the immediate priority. And that's because they've strongly agreed that they feel unsafe at home. Um, they're currently homeless or they've been homeless that year. They've actually responded to they've been homeless that year. 5% of pupils we need to be acting with now. And then a high priority group that we also want to be acting with and that constitutes a further 5% of pupils where they've said, strongly agreed that there's lots of conflict at home. They've slept away from home because they were kicked out um, or they're worried about running away that year. So for that 5%, the FLAMI workers would want to sit down, have a conversation about their answers. And in all likelihood, you're looking at some form of family mediation there. So 10% of young people that we really definitely want to be working with at least. Now, <clears throat> here's the bit. It's all data so far. Excuse me. <clears throat> so often when I present this, folks say, wow, we know who those young people are. Um, I'm still getting these conversations. And I, I challenge you. And, and I think the data that we've got now challenges that assumption because, yeah, you, you do know about some of those young people. But actually, the data would suggest we don't know about them all. Now, this very complicated graph. I'm going to simplify and just focus on this one bar. And this one bar is young people who are at high risk of youth homelessness. So that group at high risk, that 5% of pupils. And what it tells us is the percentage of those pupils who are at different levels of risk of school disengagement. So 28% of those young people who we are definitely gonna work with um, are at no risk of school disengagement, none at all. Like none of the, the indicators were tipped. A further 37% are at low level of risk of school disengagement. And that's true for the majority of, of young people in the school. If we put those together, that's about 65% of pupils. 65% of those young people at high risk of homelessness are probably not on the school's radar because they're kind of engaging in school fairly well. That's the key and fundamental contribution of, of upstream is it's, it's enabling us through schools to identify young people that we as homelessness um, services or, or mediation services can begin to intervene far earlier than waiting till crisis point, which is when we intervene at, at the moment. So real promising opportunities. And there's loads we can talk about. We've got um, uh, resources we can make available about, about the school's experiences of implementing this survey and working with the services. But that was all I wanted to do is just talk a little bit about what's happening. I hope uh, that's been useful. I'm very, very happy to um, to join the conversation after the others have presented.